What's up everybody, I'm the Mangoose, you are awesome, and today we're going to go over how to make a thumbnail that pops in Photoshop. This is one of the biggest things, biggest pieces of advice I give to people if they want to improve their YouTube channel, is to improve their thumbnails, because nobody's going to look at your video if your thumbnail looks like a three-year-old did it. So, this is the thumbnail that I'm using for ETE22, and um, we're going to go through and completely recreate this, and I'll show you all the steps that I take to make this thumbnail. And then we're going to save it down so that you have a template to use whenever you're making new thumbnails. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. We're going to start off, we're going to go File, New. And then if we wanted to create a preset, we could do it here. What we want for thumbnails is width to be 1280, height to be 720. We want this to be in pixels. So make sure you have your width at 1280, height at 720 and that it's in pixels. And then we go ahead and create. And now we have a canvas, a blank canvas to use. This is our background layer to use for our thumbnail. So the first thing we want to do, if you wanted to, you could probably just go ahead and search for, let me make a new window. You could just do a Google search for images. Like, uh, I don't know, let's type in ethereal Clash of Souls, and then we'll go to Images, and then we could grab some images off of here if we wanted to, to make a thumbnail with. But I already have some stuff saved down, so that's what we're going to use. So you would save that image, and then you would go to File, and before we do anything else, see this says Untitled, we're going to go to File, Save As, and then let's name it uh, Dante Thumb. You can name it whatever you want. This is going to be your template for your thumbs going forward. So I'm going to go to file and open and you, you would find the background that you were wanting to use. Now I have a whole bunch of backgrounds. Let's go to ethereal. I want to go, I want to use Dante's homeworld. So realm and then I've got Zuria here. So now I have this image of Zuria. So it's in its own separate tab in here in Photoshop, but I want to bring this Zuria image over to the Dante thumb image. So I just left click on it, hold left click, drag up to the Dante thumb, drag down, you see where it has this plus sign. It's gonna let me add it straight in. And I can move it around, adjust it how I want to. If I wanted to adjust the size of this image, you hold Alt and then use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And then if I wanted to adjust the side, you hit size, you hit control T while you have this layer selected and it will let you resize the image any way you want to. Now, if I wanted to just, if I wanted to just make this thinner without adjusting the overall size, I could hold shift, click on one of these handlebars and then move it in and out like that. I don't want to do that though. I'm going to hit control Z to undo what I just did. And we're just going to use this image in the background. I like, I'm going to set it right here and that's where we're going to start. And I'm going to zoom back in. Now, one of the things I like to do lately is to put a border around my thumbnails. So if I wanted to add a rectangle here, I would use a, the rectangle tool over here on the left. Now, if your setup doesn't look like mine, if you, if I'm ever operating in any window that you don't have on your Photoshop, you just go to window and then you can just click whatever ones you want. So I just have layers and properties and some other stuff. And uh, you can arrange them however you wish. But I'm just going to leave mine as it is right now. You can adjust yours to the way that you want it. And if there's any tools that you don't have, you just click right click on this icon with the three dots. And this gives you all the tools that Photoshop has available. So, but right now I just want to do a rectangle over the entire image and that's going to be our border now that of course is not a border that is a full-on rectangle smack dab in the middle of our image and covering it up so we're going to go to fill up here on the top and we're going to go to no fill so now it just looks like there's no rectangle there whatsoever that's because we need to do a stroke what a stroke does it gives you an outline on your image so if we go back to so this is our rectangle. If we go to stroke 
and I'll just want I'll just do a black stroke and this is how thick the outline is we're going to change that to 20 and now we see we, ha we have an outline around a rectangle now let's go back to fill no fill we have this outline that we can work with now I want to resize this so with the rectangle selected in the layers I will hit Control T and now I can scooch that on out to the sides and we can adjust that later as necessary we'll click this check mark to confirm our changes and as you can see I still got a little bit showing up here so I'm going to control T again I'll scooch that up just a little bit and we should be good so you can barely tell though that there is an outline here so I'm going to use the colors within this image to create a gradient on our stroke on our outline here so what we'll do is we'll select the layer that we want to pull colors from we come over here I don't have the color picker tool so well I already have it already selected you want this the eyedropper tool so I would I right click on the more options I cl click the eyedropper tool and now I can select a color from inside this image so if I wanted this sort of gold here that seems a little too bright let's try and pick a different one that seems a little too dark up here a little dark 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 lighter I like that right there so that's what we're going to go with so now we have this color selected we can go back into our rectangle click on the rectangle tool and now if we click on stroke we're going to double click there uh, just single click my bad you don't need to double click and now we can do a gradient overlay you got different options here we're going to go with the gradient and see it automatically does a gradient overlay and that already looks better than what we had but I want this overall color the starting color we're going to double click on the color stop and now it lets us change that to whatever color we want but I want what was in the image so I'm just going to go ahead and use that eyedropper dropper tool again click on that and now we have the same color that was in the image and now we can also see that we need to scooch this over just a little bit so I'm going to control T scooch that over and I, I don't like this being black I want this to be more of a silver so again rectangle we'll go to our rectangle tool I don't know why it's so hard for me to say rectangle right now and then I'm going to double click on that and now I want to bring this up to more of a silver and there we go and boom we have a border another thing I've been I, I like to do with the border is I like to put an outer glow on it to make the border a little more noticeable so we'll go to our rectangle and if you look at the bottom here you have various tools that you can use masks and all and the like uh, we'll probably get into masks at some point in time not during this video though but we're going to go to our effects and we have different effects that we can use and apply to our rectangle I'm going to go with an outer glow let me move this over and as you can see I already have an outer glow and I didn't move this over enough as you can see but I don't want that that that's kind of glaring this cyan color but I also I don't want it to be the same as the rest of the background so I'm going to go with more of a maroon sort of glow on that because that matches Dante who we're going to put in here in a little bit and you can adjust this you can make it uh the the spread like hardly anything so it's just like a block uh we can adjust the size to where it's you know really really popping out I don't want it that much I just want a slight glow on the outside so we'll hit okay and that's annoying me that this isn't all the way over again so there we go now we're in business now we're in business so now we have our background we have our box around everything and we need to add Dante again you would have to search for images to use and I'll go to and if you I'm going to put a link in the description that's going to give you like a media kit that jelly jelly knees put together go subscribe to jelly knees to check him out just if you're having trouble finding him just put in jelly knees ethereal he'll come up subscribe to his channel 
but what we're going to do is and, and he put this entire media kit together that has like every image you will ever need to make an ethereal video but you're probably, you probably know, you may not be making an ethereal video but anyway we're going to get an image of dante so i'm going to go up to my dante images Dante, Dante, Dante. I have it in alphabetical order, do I not? So we have these various images of Dante, and I do have some that are already transparent. Like if I put this one in, again, you would just left click on him, drag him over, drop him in, and then bam, you have uh, an uh, image of Dante with no background. But I don't, I'm not going to use, I've used that one so many times, I want to use something different. So let's close that out. And actually, we don't need this Zuria open anymore. I'm going to close that out too. So go back to our Dante images, and I want to use something different. But if I, so I like this one where he's jumping. But if I just put this in right now, it is, of course, just going to cover everything up. And we don't want that. So I'm going to delete that layer just by having the layer selected and just hit the delete. And we come back, and I just want... Dante, I don't want the rest of the image. Uh, easy way to do that, you go to your quick selection tool. And you can adjust the size of your quick selection tool here. And all you do is left click and drag, and it auto selects just Dante. Now it's not perfect. A lot of times it picks up, like you see it just picked up some of the background, and it's going to be hell on this cape. But this gives us a general idea of what we want. Now, if we wanted to adjust that, I'm, again, I'm going to hold Alt, mouse wheel in. And this time I'm going to hold Alt, left click. Now, you see this is a plus sign on this little circle. Whenever I hold Alt, it turns into a minus sign. That means that we can deselect stuff around Dante. So I'm just going to go through, clean this up. And I'm doing some finer detail work here. So I'm going to make this smaller my quick selection tool, eight pixels instead of what it was. We'll just go through, find anything we missed, make sure we're grabbing everything. I don't want that. That was background. That is not background. And you don't have to be too crazy with this. I want, I want this little fly, these little flyaways here. And like, it's just the thumbnail. You're not doing like really, truly professional work. You do want to make it look good, but you don't have to get crazy with it. So now that we have that selected, we're going to use our selection tool. This little plus sign looking arrow thingy. We're going to left click on Dante and then drag. And now see, we can drag just Dante out of that image. We're going to go back up to the top to the tab with our thumbnail and drop Dante in. And boom, now we have Dante without the background. And if we wanted to clean this up, it's pretty easy to do with Dante selected in the layers. So let, and if you want to change any of these, so I can change that to Dante, so we know that that layer is Dante as if it wasn't obvious. So with Dante selected, I'm going to go to this, the Magic Eraser tool. Now I have my Magic Eraser tool selected. I can zoom in. And like right here, I can clean that up. It just removes everything of that color and and uh, makes it pretty easy to clean things up like this. Now, you have different tolerances. Right now, I have it set to 5. If I were to set it to, say, 100, it would grab anything anywhere close to the color that I am selecting. So if I clicked on this, boom, it gets rid of almost all of the image. You don't want that. You want to play around with your tolerance until it's something that Oh, let me hit control Z so I can undo that. You want to play around with your tolerance so you get something that you actually enjoy. I'll clean this up a little bit. Oh, again, control Z will undo any mistakes you made. And if you keep making mistakes, you just hit control. You just keep hitting control Z <laughs> and boom. See, now my tolerance doesn't seem to be enough. Or I'm just, oh, no, no, that, I'm just looking at background. Okay, so, so that looks fine. That's good. 
Good enough for me. I'm going to adjust Dante. I want him a little more to the side here. Boom, there we go. Now, I want Dante to pop out of this image a little more than what he is right now. So what I will do is go to F with Dante selected. I'll go to effects and you can either do a drop shadow or an outer glow. Drop shadow will give him a shadow around him. As you can see, it just popped up there and you can adjust this shadow. You can make the distance more or less. Uh, you can make the spread more or less. Just mess around with this till you get something you like. You can make it bigger or smaller depending on how you want to do it. And you can also change the angle. If I wanted it to come down a different way, I just change that angle. Then as you can see, it spreads out a different way. But I usually keep it at 90 for thumbnails because I want the shadow to be directly behind them as if the light's shining directly into their face. But I actually don't, so I'll show you the difference there with shadow and without shadow. I actually don't want a drop shadow here. I want an outer glow on this Dante. So I'll go to Outer Glow, and if I wanted to use the same color that I've been using, I just, again, you can play with the spread here and, and the size, but I would want a different color, so I'm going to pick the one that we've been using, and that looks pretty good, but it doesn't pop out from this part of the background, so I'm going to make it a little bit lighter, and there we go. Still kind of the same shade, just a little bit lighter. And Dante pops out from the image. And, you know, use your personal, it's, it's, it's all up to personal taste. You could make it whatever freaking color you wanted. If you wanted, like, purple, you could make it purple. But I don't want that. So I hit Control-Z. So there we go. Now we just need to add in words to this so that people know what they're looking at. So you go, you, this T right here, that is your text tool. And if we click on that, we're gonna immediately create a text layer. We're gonna call this Dante, let's make it all caps, Dante Thumb. And so that doesn't pop out at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna highlight everything and up here, so with our text layer, our text selected, we can adjust things with the text. We can make the font bigger. Or we can change the color here to white. That way it pops out a little more. And I do not like that font at all. So we're going to grab a new font to use here. And the way we're going to do this, if we go down we open up, I already have it open, but... You open up your Adobe Creative Cloud, and then you go to the F for fonts, and browse more fonts. Yeah, 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 sign in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have all these fonts that you can use that are just, that just come with Adobe. And you can, you know, select the kind of font you want, to just narrow it down a little bit. Let's go with a comic font. And we can just look around, find one that we enjoy. I know there's one called Upper Angle that I was kind of like, yeah, Uppercut Angle. I kind of like this font here. I was looking at it earlier. So I'll look at the View family. And sometimes you have like, so this is Uppercut Angle Regular. You would have Uppercut Angle Bold, Uppercut Angle Thin, Uppercut. You have all sorts of different families. This one just has one family, which is whatever. And to activate it, all you have to do is activate font, font and boom. Now it's already in. I can go, close this out. Close. Now if I highlight my text and go up here, this is where your fonts are. I could find what was called uppercut angle. Boom, there it is. And I have, uh, and just it automatically puts it in. And now we have this uppercut angle font, which is much nicer than the New Times Roman that we had before. Now I want this to be bigger. You can adjust the font size or you can just simply control T and make it bigger. So that of course doesn't look great. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a stroke with our words selected. 
We'll go to effects. I'm going to add a stroke to put an outline around these words. Eight is fine. Black is fine. You can change the color if you want. And boom, now that pops out a little more. But I want it, I want, I want it a little more fancier. So what I'm gonna do is go to FX. I'm gonna put a gradient overlay on this. And you can pick different gradients here. It's automatically the, the, the color that we've been using. But if I've wanted a different color, it's pretty easy to do. And then you just, if you wanna change a completely new color, I want that, boom, there we go. You can also change what type of, um, gradients you have so if you wanted metal I'm gonna click OK and you could change it to like a metal font but I'm just gonna go with uh, was it color harmonies or pastels simple simple that's what I want and I'm gonna click on that and then I'm gonna change the color again and that's the same color that we used with the color picker to find something in here but that still does not pop out as much as I want it to. So I added the outer glow to Dante. I'm going to put a drop shadow on the thumb here. Drop shadow. I have to angle at 90. And this is one of the problems with Photoshop is everything pops up right in front of you. and You can't see what the hell you're doing. That distance is a little much. So I'm going to adjust this drop shadow to the way I want it. And that looks pretty good. And now I can, now it has the drop shadow. I can put it wherever I want. And it kind of like, you can see where it looks like it pops out away from that, um, the border here and it pops away from the rest of it. And let me, I'll show you how much of a difference that makes. That makes a huge difference, right? And that looks pretty good. So that's going to be our Dante thumb. Now that we have this all set up, what you can do is we did our file and we saved as we go ahead and we and we save it if we wanted to make a new so we have our dante thumb if we wanted to make a kalia thumb later on we could close all this out we're gonna open our thumbnail and boom we have our dante thumb now we can just take stuff out and add things in. So I'm going to delete out Dante. I'm going to open an image of Kalia that I have. Drag her in. And you see how easy it is to start making a completely new thumbnail. You don't have to do everything all over again. And once you have this established, People can tell what your videos are just by looking at your thumbnail. They know your style. Let's give her an outer glue. Purple's fine, whatever. And see, and it's that easy to do. So I hope this helped out anybody that's trying to make uh, some better thumbnails for themselves. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'll try to answer them if I can. But for now, this is the Mangu signing off. You guys have a good one. Man, good.